Hey, welcome back to Raunchy Reality Recap. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Kim Zolzak. Y'all know I can't pronounce that woman's name. So anyway, Kim and Croy, as you know, they, you know, filed for divorce back in like April, May. Did a whole bunch of mudslinging about which parent is worse and all this crap they do. And then, you know, they decided that they wanted to work on it, which I think I called it. And I think a lot of other people called it, too, that it wasn't going to work out because you can't go back from all that. You can't go back from somebody sitting there telling all this crap about you to try to get your kids taken away from them. So, yeah too much of a mess like if they would have kept this under wraps you know not all public like that I mean they might have been able to work it out but when you have it in the court you're telling the court system that and it's all over the news and everything yeah it's gonna be hard to get back together with that so anywho they and uh, Corey ended up refiling again, and I don't know, I might be a little bit off about this. If you want the exact information, check out the Grace Report, because she's been keeping up on this really good, and she probably has more details. But apparently, Kim, I guess, wanted to dim dismiss the divorce, and she told the reason why was they were back together because they were sleeping together. Which, girl, and, and, please, that makes no sense, okay? Okay. That doesn't matter. I mean, adults sleep together all the time. So, saying y'all are together just because y'all are sleeping together doesn't make any sense. And Croy kind of said it too. We're like, yeah, we're sleeping together, but I don't want to be married to her. And really, it's probably just out of convenience that he is sleeping with her. And probably out of convenience for her that she's sleeping with him, but she, she might have caught some feelings again. Wanted to make it work again. But girl, you done run that whole financial situation into a deep, deep hole, which is hard to recover. And it's probably best for the both of y'all to break even or break apart, split everything, all the debt down the middle. And, and just trying to like live your life, so rebuild your financial situation without having to worry if the other one's going to be, you know, dipping into the pot more than you are. So, anyhow, the judge, of course, said, you know, whatever, you know, this divorce is going because y'all two need to get divorced. Y'all don't need to be married. So, anywho, Kim, I guess, took the hint because apparently she's been flirting with Chet Hanks, which is Tom Hanks' son. Now, I don't know a lot about this guy. I don't really think he's been in any movies, but I might be wrong. But apparently, from what I hear, he has a bad reputation, some issues, maybe with some suffers. So, he... He ain't doing much better than Kim, you know? So, anywho, this magazine article from OK said Chet Hanks was warned to run away from Kim Zolciak after a flirty interaction. They said to walk the other way. Now, people are sending a clear message to him after he was seen getting flirty with her. Um, they were seen hitting it off while film filming the season eight of MTV Surreal Life in metal in Columbia, which I thought it was like TBS or TNT or USA that had like the surreal life, but I guess they switched channels. I haven't watched it since like Brigitte Nielsen and Flavor Flav and the Brady Bunch guy was on there. Okay. And the girl from top model. Yeah. I haven't watched surreal life in a long time. So yeah. Anywho, there, the fans of it went to, took to social media to kind of let their opinions be known about the whole situation one person said he should run not walk away not walk the other way and another one said run guy run which i think it should have been run chat run like you know boris tom hanks boris Gun, whatever and another person said oh god a train wreck meets a dumpster fire where the third person added i would tell any girl to run as fast as you can away from him yet i find myself wanting to tell him to run away from her apparently so yeah it, it looks like a hot mess now hopefully i'm hoping that it, you know, it was just a flirtation, a little bit here and there. And 
just a little bit of flirtation out of two people. Maybe Kim was lonely, you know, wanted Croy back, but this is the closest thing she can get because he kind of looks like, you know, uh, a mini version of Croy. I don't know. Like, she has her type. We'll just say that. So, yeah, she's definitely, definitely, <laughs> like, going out there, getting it, putting herself out there, as I should say. Also, I saw this article from page six saying um, that she was taking out designer luggage out of her storage unit amid financial woes. They always like to use this fa fancy wording. They always use the fancy wording in, in these magazines, like financial woes. You could just say the bitch is broke, okay? That's fine. You can just say she's broke. We all know that. I mean, next time I go and I can't spend like $2 because I'm broke as crap, I'm going to be like, I'm sorry, my debit card's not going through. I have some financial woes. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's more fancier. It sounds better. It sounds better than I'm a broke biatch. I'm having financial woes. Anybody else find that funny? Anyways, I'm going on. So, apparently, photographers caught her um, casually dressed, out, um, uh, having lugging three travel bags, two Louis Vuitton suitcases, and a back Chanel Hard shell carry on from a warehouse to her car on Saturday afternoon. Um, the large Louis Vuitton retails for thirty four hundred. The Weekender is twenty six hundred. Meanwhile, the Chanel trolley has a seven thousand dollar price tag. Um, yeah, good lord, yeah. So this is her carrying all that stuff. Now, I mean, this is why they're in this situation. I mean, this is part reason why y'all are living a way, way above your means. You're, you don't have a show. Koi's not in the NFL. I don't think he's really working. Y'all have that huge car payment that he has that they're trying to get back from, or maybe they already repossess it. I don't know. And then you're getting foreclosed on your house several times. And why you have, if why do you have this much like designer stuff if you can't even afford your regular bills like these people would have been fine if they live within their means they probably wouldn't be divorcing right now if years ago they started living within their means and you, like people say financial issues is one of the leading reason why people divorce and it's <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is. And it's both of them. I mean, yeah, I think Kim has a more shinier taste than Croy. And Croy probably will be fine. Well, would have been fine leading his, you know, life before her, like, just normally and spending normally instead of having, having to have everything, every single thing flashy. Every single thing, a designer thing and spending thousands of dollars on it. He probably would have been fine. But now, you know, I think Croy's kind of just as bad as Kim. Because we see the issues with his cars. He wasn't getting rid of his car. Because, you know, he wanted to drive around in a luxurious car. Which, dude, you should get a Hyundai at this point, okay? Or a Kia. Like, that's what you need to be driving. Not, what was it, a Land Rover or something? I can't even remember. But it was an expensive, it was a crazy expensive car. Like, crazy expensive. I think it might have been a Mercedes. I don't know. But it was expensive. And it was a ridiculous amount a month he was leasing on that. So, yeah, I think Croy at this point, maybe, you know, he's not fly high and spending as much as Kim is. But his expensive taste and him wanting to have a certain standard and him not saying no is, a, is him equally putting himself and his family in this financial issue just as much as Kim at this point. Because we, I mean, look at both of them. They're both always decked out in designer stuff. I mean, I think Kim was trying to sell some of his designer shoes a few weeks ago. Like, again, why do you have designer shoes? You literally were foreclosing on your house. Like, y'all you, should have stopped doing this a long time ago. Stop doing this a long time ago. You could have saved your house. Or, or maybe stop doing all this and downsize your house. Because, honey, yeah. It ain't working. 
And it, this isn't something that just all of a sudden they can't pay their bills. This was them not having any income come in and still spending like they had income coming in. And living up way above their means and not wanting to downsize and not wanting to stop living this life luxury. So they're both in the situation because of both of them. So I don't really feel sorry for any of them, really. Except the kids, of course. But anywho, so Kim was also, I guess, pulling out all this stuff. But we also have a video, which uh, I'm not going to show it on here. But there is a police video where, again, they call the cops. Because y'all know these heifers like to call the cops all the time. For for ridiculous stuff it's ridiculous so apparently croy locked her out the bedroom and she had to call the police to get his stuff the police came over there he didn't want to you know unlock the door and let the police in the bedroom so he was shouting out through the hall or through the door and kim went in there finally got like a comforter or some neck cream and um medication and stuff like get the medication and you know I get the medication, but please tell me in that big house y'all didn't have one other comforter, and why do you need nut cream that bad? <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. It really is. Like, you called the cops for this. You are literally wasting the cops' time because y'all can't sit there and act like two adults. I mean, this isn't one beating up on each other. This is two adults acting like toddlers, okay? This isn't domestic violence. This is two adults acting like toddlers, locking each other out of places, not wanting to leave, call the cops on them. Uh, at this point, they should be charged for every 911 call they make. Every time a cop comes out there, they should be caught, charged like a private fee, as if it was a private like a private security guard or some some crap i mean some kind of they should be paid a babysitter fee at this point because it's downright ridiculous y'all are calling the cops because y'all are locking each other out i mean hmm. and then what gets me is when i saw this video like maybe y'all should take the huge huge pain or huge picture of y'all's wedding day off of the wall because you see it right i guess it's the bedroom door next to their bedroom door huge huge portrait huge frame portrait of their wedding day and it's like maybe y'all should really take this stuff down because that probably ain't helping you every time you walk out the, the door you gotta see your biggest mistake probably <laughs> like is it's, it's ridiculous but anywho, that's all I wanted to go and talk about in this episode or this video that I saw. So y'all have a great day. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye.